friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and I'm on the WW or the Weight Watchers Blue Plan. Happy Wednesday, it's Wednesday so it's another what I eat in a day on WW. I'm excited to take you guys along with me today. We have a fun little subscription box unboxing, a really good dinner recipe, some fun food throughout the day, lots of updates for you. We have positive updates and we have a little bit of sad news to share with you as well. So it's going to be a fantastic day. So if you're excited, give this video a big huge thumbs up. And if you're new and you haven't yet subscribed, I would love to have you join my channel and our amazing community. Hit the subscribe button and click the bell right next to it so you never miss a single video. Check out the description box down below for everything I share with you in today's video, as well as links and discounts to all of my other favorite things. Nutrition coaching, I do offer personalized to you macros and calories. Highly recommend taking advantage of this service just so you know where you should fall to be most successful in wherever you are on your healthy lifestyle journey. And if you want to chat with me directly, I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching as well. And last but not least, down in the description box, you will find my Facebook group, head on over, join us there. We'd love to have you. So let's go ahead and jump into this what I eat in a day to lose weight on WW. today. It's just about eight o'clock. I'm going to be starting my meal prep, but I'll sit down after breakfast and give you guys some updates. I have a sad update or a sad, I have sad news and then I have an update. So for breakfast, I'm going to have two hard boiled eggs. I made these last week. I just need to eat them up. I have some raspberries and then I did an English muffin with one tablespoon of peanut butter spread between the two English muffins. So the raspberries and the eggs are zero. The English muffin is four and the peanut butter is three. So my breakfast is going to be seven points. Good morning, guys. Welcome to this week's What I Eat in a Day. I just finished my breakfast. It was so delicious. I've been on this big peanut butter kick lately. I've been loving it on celery. I've been putting it on toast and English muffins. Really, really good. I don't know what my deal is, but I'm loving peanut butter lately. But I wanted to hop on really quick and kind of let you know what to expect for today's What I Eat in a Day. And then I have an update on diesel. And I also have some sad news to share with you guys as well. If you hear the dogs in the background, Palmer and Lola are playing. But first for today, what we're going to do is we are going to spend the day together. I'm going to share with you all of my meals throughout the day today. I have a candle subscription box that came in the mail. I'm going to share that with you. I have a coaching call this afternoon and then I have a really good dinner recipe to share with you. So we're going to have a pretty fun day. I'll share the dogs, of course, as always. But before we jump into the what I eat in a day, I did want to share those updates with you. So let's start with an update about Diesel. So Diesel on this last Friday went into the vet for his final follow-up appointment from his ACL surgery. So when he went in for his follow-up appointment, the vet said that he's looking really, really good. Our concern was is that he's still not putting a lot of weight on that leg and he's actually still limping around quite a bit. So the vet tested his range of motion and it is perfect. He's able to completely rotate Diesel's knee. He felt it, made sure there wasn't any swelling. And apparently when dogs have a torn ACL, they can feel the tear. So he checked the ACL to confirm that it wasn't torn anymore, which it's not. So he gave Diesel basically a clean bill of health. He did prescribe him some additional pain medication just because they can still experience some pain up through the entire recovery, which he says could potentially be through the end of the year. So he may be limping around or not putting full weight on his leg 
really through December potentially. So the good news is, is that he's good to go. He can go outside without us. He doesn't have to be on a leash. He can play, he can run, he can do normal things for the most part. We're still a little leery and careful with how much physical activity he does. If he's getting too excited and running around too much, we try to put a little halt to that, but we're letting him just be a dog. He's going in and out as he chooses. He's still scared to slip and slide on the floor. So that's something we're still overcoming because we picked up all the rugs that we had on the floor during his recovery because they just get covered in dog hair and they're dirty and you have to wash them once a week. So we got rid of the rugs. So now he's kind of relearning how to walk on the floors, but he's doing really, really well. He will continue the pain medication just through no longer limp. But like I said, could be through the end of the year. As far as his hair growing back, the vet said it could take up to two years for his hair to grow back. He said, depending on where the follicle is when they shave it, it couldn't grow back quickly or not quickly. And Diesel's is growing back, but he has spots that are pretty bare still. So that was interesting. So he may be a little patchy, uh, potentially for a couple of years. Can you hear these two? Palmer and Lola playing. So that's really good news about Diesel. We were so happy that he has that clean bill of health and he's doing so well. The vet said he's doing abnormally well for a dog that is so large. He's about 115 pounds and almost 10 years old. So we're really happy. We couldn't be happier actually with the results from his surgery. While we were at the vet with Diesel, we decided to go ahead and take Palmer, our little puppy, into the vet as well because he is at the age now, almost seven months, where he can be neutered. Before we picked Palmer up from the breeder as a puppy. She let us know that one of his balls, essentially TMI maybe, didn't actually drop. And what can happen is they can get tangled up by their liver, I believe, kidney or liver, one of those two, and it can cause cancer if it's not removed. So the breeder said that it may potentially drop as Palmer gets a little bit older. Well, it still hasn't dropped. So when we took Palmer in to the vet with Diesel, we spoke to them about having Palmer neutered. Well, unfortunately, because his one ball is up by his organ and the vet said it can get like, you know, tangled up, that it's a pretty extensive procedure. He essentially has to neuter and spay Palmer at the same time. He will have a pretty big cut, about a five inch cut on his abdomen, and he's not a huge dog. So that's a good chunk of his abdomen. And he basically has to go in there and reach in and pull the ball out that is kind of tangled up in there. So it's sad because it is such an extensive procedure that has longer recovery time. It's obviously more expensive because it's not just your traditional neuter. So he is going to go in on the 27th of August for his neuter spay and this surgical procedure. So he will be under anesthesia. It will be a longer recovery, two to three weeks versus a traditional, you know, one to one and a half week of a regular neuter. And it's just a sticky procedure because that ball is tangled up in there. So we're worried about him. Of course, we love him. And anytime our dogs go to the vet and are put under anesthesia, it's worrisome. So we're worried. We're a little sad that it didn't just naturally drop into place like a lot of the other dogs did. In fact, Palmer is the only one in his litter that the ball didn't drop down. He's the only one that has to have this more extensive procedure. So we were a little bit sad with the news, but we love this vet. They did such a great job with diesel surgery that we're confident, we just, we're sad that Palmer has to go through a more extensive procedure. But once he gets neutered, the risk of cancer is gone and it should help mellow him out a little bit, which honestly is the part I'm most excited about. So those are my updates for you. Let's get into the rest of our What I Eat in a Day. So here's my lunch for today. I'm actually having my meal prep. If you have not seen my Monday meal prep, definitely check it out. This is a Caprese turkey burger, or chicken burger. So underneath here I have the actual chicken burger covered with some light mozzarella, tomato, fresh basil leaves, a little bit of pesto, like a teaspoon on my bun. These are amazing. If you love that Italian vibe, if you love the mozzarella and basil and pesto, you are going to love these burgers. The burger itself is three points. The bun is also three points. And then my little teaspoon of pesto is one point. So my burger as it sits is seven points, which is not bad at all. And then for dessert, I'm just going to have one of these coconut unreals. These are actually three points as well, which is crazy for 70 calories. Again, that whole points versus calories thing. But my lunch is a total of 10 smart points. So I thought I would give you an update on the current situation at my house. So I just finished my lunch and I have my little Lola here. You guys, this is her spot. She loves to come in when she's super hot outside 
and lay up against the nice cool couch. So that is Lola. She's currently taking a little nap. And Diesel is half in the sun, half out of the sun. He likes to lay in the sun, but he gets hot really easy. So he doesn't usually lay in the sun for that long. Usually you find Palmer wherever there's a glimpse of sunlight. But he's just so cute. I don't know if you guys can see, but he just has a big smile on his face. He's happy as can be because he's free as a bird now. And he can go outside at leisure and do whatever he wants. And Palmer found something. It's probably a bug, you guys. He finds these bugs and then he flips them all around. So, of course, I'm going to have to see if there's now a bug in my house. Palmer, do you want to say hi to our friends? Say hi, friends. Palmer. Palmer. Hey. Palmer. Palmer, look. Say hi. Hey guys, I just finished my lunch and as promised, I got my Wicked Bayou candle subscription box in the mail yesterday and I barely could contain myself to dig into it. This is one of my very, very favorite subscriptions. It is a small company. It's a family owned small business in the New Jersey area and it is just amazing. They give you different products every month. You generally receive four to five products. You always get a eight ounce candle in a tin. You can get products like wax melts or decorative pieces. And from my experience, you always receive a car air freshener, which I really appreciate because then I'm able to swap out my car air freshener every month. I will say that my air freshener still smells from last month, my turtle one, but I'm hoping there's a fresh one in here for the month of August. So here is the little card that comes in the box and on the back it does tell you all of the products that you received in your box I do not want to peek though here is what it looks like it is sealed with a little heart sticker <gasps> air freshener so let's dive in so here's this month's car air freshener and this is in the scent mermaid cove I just have to smell it before we go over all of the notes. Like I said, I love these. They have such good scent and it literally lasts in my car all month long. Oh. oh my gosh, that smells so good. So it says notes of coconut water, lemon zest, and Valencia orange. I definitely smell that with pineapple nectar, sea lily, and lychee blossom. Wow, that smells incredible. Cannot wait to put this in my car. A little later this afternoon, we're actually going to go to one of my real estate clients that I just closed on her house. Gosh, it's been maybe less than a month ago. She's having a little housewarming get together with her family and she invited me, which I thought was really sweet. So we're gonna head over there. So we will officially place this in my car and see if we like the smell. We also received wax melts and this is in the scent Castaway. So it says notes of coconut water, kaffir lime leaves, kaffir, 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 and lime juice with lemongrass, Malibu rum, and orange nectar. Oh, oh my gosh, it's amazing. That is so good. That is so good. It smells very coconut rummy to me, literally like Malibu rum smells. So their wax melts are great. They have really good throw. The scent lasts a very long time, so I am excited for that. It looks like we received a second pack of wax melts, and this is in Pink Coconut Calypso. And this says notes of coconut water, pink berry, and black currant with driftwood. Oh, wow. That is good. This is a good transition shade from summer to fall. It still has those bright notes of summer, but that driftwood gives it that smoky, outdoorsy smell. Oh, this smells incredible, as always. And lastly, in my box is my other favorite part of this box, and that is the eight ounce candle. And this is in the scent Beaches. I cannot wait to smell this. It says, notes of sea salt, coconut water, lavender, ocean sea spray, driftwood, beach moss, and amber. Let's, oh, wow, oh my goodness, that is so good, that is so good, wow, wow. This is probably my favorite scent that we've received so far. I really like that their August box is still summer themed because we're still in summer, but it's definitely transitioning us into fall with these scents. So this one, it smells sweet and summery, but again, it has those notes of driftwood and amber that give it that fall vibe. It is the perfect transition. So excited about this. So again, this is Wicked by You Candle Subscription. It's a small business. If you love candles and you want to support a small business, I will link it down below. Not an affiliate link. It 
It is simply the link over to their website for you to take part in the subscription. So to recap, we received the eight ounce candle in Beaches, the Castaway and Pink Calypso Wax Melt, and the super cute Mermaid Tail that smells amazing, car air freshener. So again, everything is linked down below if you're interested. A lot of you have already subscribed, which makes me really happy because we're supporting a small business. And you guys also love it when I unbox this. So that is August Wicked Bayou Candle Subscription Box. My boring yet satisfying and protein filled afternoon snack. I'm actually just having two servings or one cup of my 2% Good Culture Cottage Cheese. It is going to be a three points and it is packed with protein and it will tide me over until I have dinner tonight. We are about to head out the door to go to my client's little housewarming party. So let's pack up and head out. And we are off to my client's little housewarming get together. I have to say how nice it is that she invited me over and I'm not even part of her family, just a friend now. So we're going to drive about 20 minutes or so north of where I live. Their house is just absolutely adorable. So let's go ahead and hit the road. So I'm just pulling into my client's house for their little get together. I don't think I'm going to stay too late because I wanna get home and make dinner. I have such a good dinner recipe to share with you guys, but of course I really appreciate her inviting me. So I'm here, I'm going to go enjoy myself for a little bit and then we'll head on home and make some dinner. So my sweet client sent us home with two huge pans of food and an entire tres leches cake. How sweet is she? This is one of my favorite parts about real estate is all of the absolutely amazing friends. For dinner tonight, I'm making skillet chicken with mushroom wine sauce, and then I'm going to pair that with some jasmine rice. So let me show you what's in dinner. First, you're going to need some salt and pepper, garlic powder and thyme. You can also use fresh thyme, a shallot, Dijon mustard, cornstarch, some type of oil. This is avocado oil, mushrooms, minced garlic, chicken stock, and I'm going to be making up some jasmine rice, white wine, you wanna make sure you purchase a dry wine, some all-purpose flour, and lastly, some whole milk. So to start the chicken, we're going to take a bowl, and to that bowl, we're adding half of a cup of flour, garlic powder, and salt and pepper, and then just give that a quick mix. We're going to use the flour mixture to drudge our chicken in to get it nice and coated. I did cut my chicken breasts in half so that they were a little bit thinner, and we're just going to pop those into that flour mixture. Make sure they get coated really well on both sides, and then I'm just going to set them back on my cutting board here until my butter and oil warm up in my skillet. I did go ahead and add one cup of jasmine rice, two cups of chicken broth to a pan to get my rice cooking as well. I have a skillet here getting warmed up with three tablespoons of light butter and a tablespoon of avocado oil. I don't think I showed you guys the chicken or the butter. I haven't been feeling the best this evening, so I think my mind is just not all there. So you will need some butter and chicken, of course. I will link the original recipe on my website as well as all of my modifications, so you can go ahead and copy that. But we're going to let this melt down. And over here on my other burner, I do have the rice and chicken broth coming to a boil. We're going to let that rice cook completely. Through. I have my four chicken pieces. I'm going to add those to the pan with the butter and the oil and we're going to allow those to fry up for about four to five minutes. When your chicken is done, it should be nice and crispy on all sides. It looks so good. We're going to go ahead and remove the chicken from the pan. If you don't have enough leftover oil and butter in your pan, for the mushrooms you can add a little bit more, but it looks like I have plenty so I'm removing the chicken and just going to set that aside and then I'm just going to immediately drop in the mushrooms and we want to let them cook kind of undisturbed for a couple of minutes and then just give them one or two quick stirs until they've softened. Once your mushrooms are softened we're going to add in the sliced shallot and some minced garlic. One and a half cups of chicken broth and a half of a cup of the white wine. 
your thyme, and a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. I'm gonna go ahead and turn up my heat here. We want this to come to a boil. As it starts to warm up, we're going to run our spoon across the bottom. That will deglaze the pan and get all of that yummy goodness browned on the bottom off of the pan. Bring it to a boil and allow it to boil for about five minutes. We want to reduce it down just a bit before we add in our cornstarch slurry. I added in the cornstarch slurry, let it get a little thickened up, and now we're going to add back in our chicken. We just wanna make sure that it gets warmed through. The rice is done, I'll plate everything up, and I'll be back to share points and calories. So here is my dinner. This looks absolutely delicious. I have a half of a cup of cooked jasmine rice, and then I topped it with one fourth of the chicken recipe. It does make four servings, and that is going to be four points on the blue and purple plan, and six on the green plan. I'll put the calories here on the screen for you, but this looks so delicious and there's plenty of leftovers. This would be a great family friendly weeknight dinner. So I'm just sitting here editing my meal prep for today. As always, I'm filming this video on a Sunday. So up live on my channel today went the video where I'm answering all of the really tough, not comfortable questions that I've received and the mean comments. Just some of the mean comments, there's a lot more, but some of the mean comments I've received over my time on YouTube and I had to hop on as I'm reading through the comments, hundreds of comments comments and all of them are positive. There's a couple that could veer towards the maybe not positive, but all of the feedback and all of the comments and the love that you've shown on that video, you guys means the world to me. Thank you so, so much. Sometimes as a creator, we can feel really unappreciated because when we do see mean comments or rude comments or we spend a lot of time on a video and if you didn't know, it takes hours for us to put up a five minute video on YouTube. By the time we research the topic, come up with the content, film the content, edit the content, make the thumbnail and get it all uploaded to the internet. And especially for me, I have to drive to another location than my home to upload. It's hours and hours. So when we don't get views or when we get a lot of thumbs downs or negative comments, it can really take a toll on us. So it's really nice at least for me to hear you guys be so appreciative of my channel and so many of you said you just love how consistent I am that a lot of the other creators aren't consistent in posting and I'm very consistent which I pride myself on it's kind of my type a personality so I just had to hop on and give you guys a big thank you it really really truly means a lot to me and it reminds me that you do appreciate all of the content that I put out so thank you again I like seriously love you guys for joining me on another What I Eat in a Day on WW. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me today, seeing that really good dinner recipe, getting lots and lots of updates. So excited about the candle subscription box. So excited for that. I'll make sure it's linked down below and it's a great way to support a small business. So if you enjoyed another What I Eat in a Day, give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps out my channel and just lets me know what types of videos to keep putting out for you guys to enjoy. And if you're new and you haven't yet subscribed, don't forget to subscribe. Click the bell so you don't miss a single video. I do what I eat in a day's every single Wednesday. Don't forget to check out the description box down below for everything I shared with you today, as well as links, discounts to all my favorite things, my Facebook group, and of course, nutrition coaching. Thanks again for watching, my friends. Happy Wednesday. I love you all, and I'll see you next time. Bye.